I'm Ryan. I'm a science teacher. I'm Cheryl, and I slept through science. Each episode will tackle a science question you may have learned in school, but can't quite remember or fully explain. And I'll take the risk of asking the dumb questions so that we can all understand the science we slept through. The bell has rung. Let's get started. Welcome to lesson 13. We are in our hot and cold unit. Cheryl, what are you thinking about this week? Well, Ryan, I was thinking about just like other, like, you know, sometimes in life people start making statements about things and you're like, I don't think that that's true, but I don't necessarily know what is true. But then they like, say it with such confidence that you're like, I don't think you're right. And I don't know exactly how to tell you that you're not right. And so one of those for me was a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I have heard more than one person say this. Okay. Here's the phrase. Okay. The phrase. Alcohol doesn't freeze. Okay. Alcohol doesn't freeze. And it's, uh, it's always the same context. And you are not a drinker. So I don't I think not. you are necessarily going to know this, but there are people who store vodka in their freezer. Yeah, my dad does. Okay, great. Yeah. So if I think it's like a thing to make it last longer. I don't myself. I'm also more of a whiskey person. I don't know if this applies to whiskey or not or not. <laughs> um, and they say they store it in there. They, obviously, it's to last longer. And they say, yeah, because alcohol doesn't freeze. And it drives me crazy. I haven't heard this in a while. I'm also no longer in my 20s. So maybe this is like a young person thing. I don't mm, I don't know. Okay. Or I'm just like don't have roommates in the same way. I don't know what it is. But yeah. I've heard this said and it's just not true because everything freezes. Obviously alcohol freezes. Like alcohol isn't <laughs> this like magical substance that is like has – like doesn't have the ability to freeze or like fights against freezing at all costs. I mean, I'm, I'm, so I think what they mean is alcohol doesn't freeze at the temperature that is in our freezers. Okay. Freezes below that temperature, but that's not what they say. And it kills me inside. You probably experienced this with all sorts of science statements like every day. Oh, never. I I never hear people (laughs) misuse science ever. (laughs) It's always 100% correct when everybody says something scientific. Oh, okay. Well, then it's just me and my experience. It's just you. Yeah, I can't help you on this one, Cheryl. You're on your own. <laughs> but alcohol freezes, right? Well, let's let's move into the pre-assessment here. Okay. So what, what makes you say that – you said that everything freezes. Why yes. do you say that? What do you base oh. that on? Well, like we talked about how my desk is frozen in a previous episode. Like okay. everything is frozen because like, or not everything is frozen. Everything is capable of freezing. Just like any substance can turn into solid form at a certain temperature. Alcohol isn't above that. I don't know. So I think it freezes because it's a liquid. So obviously at room temperature or freezer temperature, it is still in liquid form. Okay. But if it got cold enough, it would freeze. Just not the same as water freezing. Like not the same temperature that okay. water freezes at. Okay. Do you know what temperature water freezes at? Um, I'm going to say 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero Celsius. Look at that. Two units of measure. Hey, oh, only one I can do. <laughs> don't don't ask me another one. No? Well, 100 Celsius is like 240 Fahrenheit. Two something Fahrenheit, okay. which is boiling. Boiling. Oh, we're in the pre-assessment, so you're not going to directly <laughs> answer my questions. <laughs> well, I can. I mean, I guess we're technically not talking about boiling. So you're correct. Yes, 100 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water boils, which is 212 Fahrenheit. Oh, 212. Okay. Yeah. Should have known it wouldn't be a round number. But funny, it's easier to remember in Celsius. Hmm. What does that tell us? America. That's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. One other thing that you mentioned was the reason that people tell you that they put vodka in the freezer. 
Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that? To like that it would last longer, which I didn't know was a problem with alcohol. So I don't even know if that's true either. But like, okay. Um, milk goes in the refrigerator and it stays like it doesn't go bad as quickly. Okay. In a colder temperature. Um, if I had too much of my leftovers that I wasn't going to eat them this week, I could freeze them and they'd be good for like months. And then I could defrost them and eat them. So obviously like temperature does have a big impact on keeping things um, from like going bad. Okay. I don't know how you would make alcohol go bad. I know how to make wine go bad. I'm assuming is if you store it in like a really warm space or probably beer too, but like, I didn't think that that really affected vodka okay. in the same way because it's vodka. Like it, <laughs> okay, I don't know. So it feels different to me. So here's another question. Again, you may not know because you're not someone who's done this, yeah. but you mentioned beer and wine. Did anyone ever talk about putting beer and wine in the freezer? Ooh, no, 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 no. And so, why not? Well, beer is carbonated. Okay. And I'm pretty sure beer would freeze at a at the same beer is like mm, I don't know if it's the same as water. I feel like it would be a more similar temperature to water freezing. Why? Because it's made from water, but vodka is made from water. So now I'm like that's that can't be the reason. But also like it being carbonated, I would not put a closed beer bottle in my freezer because it would expand and explode. Mm. And that would be a problem. Like people do put champagne in the freezer to quickly cool it. They'll like get a towel um, wet and wrap it around the champagne bottle and put it in the freezer for like 10 to 15 minutes. And you got to really watch that thing because otherwise it's going to explode in mm -hmm. your freezer because it's going to expand when it freezes. Okay. okay. And then that's going to be a big mess. Okay. And wine... I don't know. That's like grape juice. Doesn't that freeze the same? I don't know. But isn't it the alcohol? Mm, now I'm not sure. But people do okay. not talk about putting beer or wine in the right. freezer. I think it's been like a vodka thing. Yeah. Okay. And based on my research, I think you're. I think you're right. Okay. That's typically I at least from what I've seen. Again, I don't drink, so yeah, I don't put any of it in the freezer or the refrigerator or on my counter. So <laughs> I don't put it anywhere because I don't like it. But. I, that's what my understanding is. Yeah, it tends to be vodka and maybe a few other things, but not generally beer and wine. Yeah, okay. All right, Cheryl, are you ready for some learning? Yep. Okay. First thing is, your intuition is correct. Yay! <laughs> uh, I had a college, my, my chemistry professor in college, and he talked about your inner scientist. And he said that everybody has an inner scientist and our inner scientist isn't, isn't always right, but oftentimes it is. And so kind of so trust cute. your inner scientist. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like ratatouille with the little chef. Uh, sure. It's the rat on my head yep. under my hat that is telling me about science. Y yes. That's you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the rat on your head telling you about science. Thanks, Cheryl. That's so sweet. But you're correct. And actually, it shows that you remembered something from our previous lessons on hot and cold about freezing. You even referenced that you remembered that your desk is frozen. Mm -hmm. All some, It means for something to be frozen is... For it to be in solid form. There you go, right? It, it's a solid. That's what it means to be frozen. But colloquially, we tend to think about things that are frozen as things that are cold. That's what yes. we typically mean. When people say alcohol never freezes, like you implied, what they mean is in your kitchen freezer. Yes. And like you had your, your hypothesis, you had a hypothesis. Hey, uh... yeah, look at you, inner scientist. Mm -hmm. Your hypothesis was that it does have a freezing temperature. It's just lower than the temperature that it is in the freezer. And that's correct. Nice. So depending on the, the specific type of alcohol, 
So things like vodka is typically around what they call 80 proof. I'm guessing you're familiar with yep. that, mm-hmm. which I don't know why they use proof. I'm sure there's some old reason for it, but you just cut the number in half and that's the percentage of it that is alcohol. Yes, which is like very weird to me. It is to me too. Just use the percentage, but it feels like one of those hoity toity, um, <laughs> like distillery people type mm-hmm. of phrases or terms it, to use. It does kind of. Yeah, it does yeah. kind of. But so typically, like a vodka or a gin or a whiskey are 80 proof, which means they're 40% alcohol. And that means their freezing point is negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit which is negative 27 degrees Celsius. Oh, so beer and wine are less percentage of alcohol. Yes, they are. So that's going to change their freezing point. Yes, it is. Because what is the rest of it? If something is 40% alcohol, what's the rest of it made out of? And you've already kind of- Kind of water. It's water. Yeah, water. No, it is water. Like- something that right, like, but even juice is mostly water yes yeah yeah right and so if you have pure water without anything in it it freezes at 32 degrees fahrenheit or zero degrees celsius like yeah. you already said yeah but if you dissolve something else in water you can change the freezing point they call it freezing point depression which means oh. you lower the freezing point cool and that includes if you dissolve a liquid in water like alcohol. So then Everclear, which is like crazy amounts of alcohol, I don't mm-hmm. remember, the, it would be even a lower freezing point than like right. your average vodka. Right. Yes. And by the way, I'm getting these percentages and freezing points from the spruceeats.com. I'll link it in our description in case anyone else would like to reference that. I do not just know these temperatures off the top of my head. (laughs) That's cute. Spruce eats. I like that. Yeah. So beer is the lowest one. It's usually between three and 12% alcohol. And so it freezes at about 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Okay. Very similar. To water. Yes. Yeah. At 32 degrees. Right. And typically your kitchen freezer, and you obviously can adjust the temperature, but it's typically recommended to keep your kitchen freezer at around zero degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So Got that's it. definitely lower than the 28 degrees Fahrenheit yeah. for beer. So your beer would explode. It would, and but that's actually not because of the carbonation. Really? It's because of the water. Oh, just because even if you put a water bottle in your freezer, it would expand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That water makes, Okay. Water is amazing. I love water. There's really cool things. We've already talked about some of the cool things with water. Remember, I have my fun little water molecule yeah. models that you love. Popcorn. Looking at the popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that's really cool about water and why it's so important to life is when it freezes, it does something atypical, something that's not normal compared to most other things. It actually becomes less dense. Hmm. And you can see that by ice cubes float in water. Oh, yeah. Usually when you freeze things, you, and it's not the same thing, but you can think about it as they get heavier. They get The molecules aren't moving as much, so they get closer together. It gets more dense. And typically the solid of something will sink in the liquid of that same thing. That makes so much sense because I hear about different things just in the world. Like people talk about how when it's cold, it contracts and when it's hot, it expands. Yes. I mean, if you talk about skincare, people are like, oh yeah, you do like steam on your face and your pores, like open open up, up, you know, things like that. And so that does feel flipped from that. And Interesting. It, water's not the only thing that does it, but it is it is not the norm to do that. And so that's why when it freezes, it actually, and it's because of the weird Mickey Mouse shape of the molecules, they actually lock themselves into this weird sort of crystal pattern where they're actually less close together than when they're liquid. So that just has to do with the shape of the molecule. That's why they yeah. do that. Yeah. And something called polar bonding, but yes. Yeah. And so it's very cool. And that's why water expands when it freezes. 
because it actually falls into this shape where it kind of locks in place. Yeah. (laughs) So we're looking at your little, some sort of, I don't know, a popcorn maker is what I like to think of it as. So this is the same simulation we've used a number of times. And again, I'll put a link in the description in case you want to go back and do it. And we can put maybe some pictures on social media for those of you who are just listening uh, to the audio, or you could jump over to YouTube and watch it as we actually do it. If you like link in the description, but if you remember, we've looked at this before looking at different phases right? So this is, what phase would you say this one is? Where all of the little- Oh, this is a solid because it looks like an ice cube. It's not filling up the whole space on the bottom. Like Mm -hmm. there's air on either side of it. They're still moving a little bit because unless it's absolute freezing, they're still going to move a little bit. Right. Right. So all the the little dots represent molecules and they're still jiggling in place because they're not at absolute zero, but they're more or less locked in place compared to each other. Right? Yeah. They're not really sliding past each other. Whereas if I move it to a liquid, now they're, like you said, they're kind of filling the bottom of it. They're moving around a little bit more. They're jiggling a little bit faster. Yeah. Right. But if I change this from just, and technically I think this is supposed to be neon, it doesn't really matter. But if I make it water, now you get to see the fun little shapes that you love so much, like yep. spinning around. But watch what happens as we move it back into a solid. <gasps> Whoa. So do you see how they actually, there's all these open spaces between some of the molecules yes. and it's not a magic pattern. It's not like a, an exact pattern, like a crystalline structure per se, but it, they are definitely like pushing against each other in some very unique ways, different to what you saw with the, the neon ones where they were just single, single dots. It looks like they're little magnets and they don't want to get too close to each other. And that's actually kind of what they are. Oh, it's, cool. it's not technically a magnet, but it's a similar thing with electromagnetism. So yeah, so that's what's happening on the molecular scale is, and again, if I if I heat it up here and we can get it to melt, you'll notice they actually come back together <gasps> yes. again and they get closer, right? That's so now so they're closer and spinning around. Whereas when I make it colder, eventually it'll get to a place and then they're going to just start and then they'll kind of like lock <gasps> into place there. And they actually expand and get bigger. Oh my gosh. They look like very precarious acrobats. I'm a <laughs> little kind of worried do. for them. Yep. Whereas if I go back and we do the same thing here with, with, in this case, it's neon, but something that isn't water, typically when I, you know, go to, to melt it oh. and the heat, right. It actually is taking up when that looks more like a gas, but fine. That actually looks exactly like a gas, but ignore me. Right. And if I go and try and pull it back into a solid, they just get closer together. They don't yeah. actually like lock. a little honeycomb. Yeah. So they don't actually go into that weird additional shape. So it's unique to water that it does that. And that's why things expand when you put them in the freezer and tying it back to alcohol. That's why if you put something like beer, which is a really, really small percentage, I think I said three to 12% of it is yes. actually alcohol and the rest of it is water and I mean, sugars and other things, but most of it's water it's going to behave mostly like water and snap into that shape at a much higher temperature. Mm. Interesting. So my bottle of vodka, which I don't own, but if I were a vodka (laughs) drinker that I put in the freezer, it technically does have some water in it. It technically will expand a little bit, but not so much that I'm worried about like the top popping up of it. Correct. But it's not going to expand until it reaches that freezing point of water. Uh, And since, well, the freezing point of the solution technically, because the water in it, but it's the water that's going to do that expanding and it won't do that until it can actually freeze. And it's not going to freeze in my freezer. It's not going to freeze in your freezer because for vodka, that freezing temperature is, let me pull it back up again, a negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Negative 17. So that's 17 degrees below the temperature that's in your freezer. Yeah. Right. So it's not ever going to freeze in your freezer. Yeah. 
So then we're correct. not worried about it expanding. We're not worried about it expanding. And the reason for that, and we don't need to go into a lot of details, but you can sort of think it's because the alcohol molecules are getting in between those water molecules. Kind of like we talked about with dissolving. Remember when we talked about sugar dissolving and the water kind of filled in around the glucose molecules. It's a similar sort of a thing, except now it's an alcohol molecule that prevents those water molecules from snapping into that kind of magical mm. acrobat structure that you, yeah. that you called it because they're in the way. So they prevent that from happening. And that's why it can get colder before it happens. Cool. Yeah. Now, does it actually make it last longer? Uh, yes and no. Okay. Keeping it colder can allow alcohol to last longer because alcohol has a much higher, what we call vapor pressure than water does. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about exactly what vapor pressure is, okay. but I'll, let me use an analogy so that you can sort of think about it. Hand sanitizer has become a big deal oh, yeah. in the last several years. Oh yeah. It was already a thing, but it's now, if you've never experienced it before, you've definitely experienced hand sanitizer now. One of the things about most hand sanitizers is they're alcohol-based. Mm -hmm. They have ethanol in them. And you rub them on your hands, and then they just dry off. Yeah, it evaporates, own. right? They evaporate. They do. Exactly. That's because alcohol has a relatively high vapor pressure, which means it can evaporate pretty quickly and easily at room temperature under normal circumstances, okay. much, much higher than water does. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So when you have something that has a higher alcohol concentration, like a vodka, mm -hmm. and if you keep it at a warmer temperature, more of that alcohol is going to be leaving that liquid and, ex and escaping into the air. But the lid is on. But it's still, there's air inside your container. It can still leave the liquid and still be in the container. Think about it like, uh, it's not the same thing, but think about it kind of like pop going flat. So if you have soda pop yeah. in, in what, whatever it is, even yeah. in like a two liter bottle, right? And you open it the first time, right? And it releases all the stuff and bubbles come up. If it shook it up, then there's even more bubbles that come out or whatever. And you can close it again. But even if you leave it completely sealed, if you leave it sitting there, it won't be as bubbly after a few days. It goes flat. Yeah. That's because the carbonation, which is literally just carbon dioxide dissolved in the liquid, goes out into the air that's in the remainder of that container, even though the, the container is sealed. Mm, okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So that's a similar thing. It's not exactly the same because there's other stuff going on, but it's a similar thing where you've got the alcohol that's in it is going to evaporate more quickly than the water is in the same container. So then the alcohol, it's way less likely that the alcohol is actually going to go bad. As it's it not is. going to go bad at all. Okay. It's just that some of it will disappear. Correct. So unlike milk, you mentioned milk yeah. or food, that is to keep it from going bad is usually to keep it from having bacteria or mold grow yeah. on it. And that has to do with you keep those things colder, things metabolize much more slowly. They, they grow and replicate much, much more slowly at cool temperatures. So that's, that's why that works in general. Whereas with an alcohol, alcohols kill things. <laughs> Yeah. Right. You use alcohol as a disinfectant. We do that for a reason. So yeah. something that is as much alcohol as like a vodka, you can use vodka as a disinfectant. Yes. So you're not really worried about it going bad in that sense. Whereas even a wine, there's things that can happen because it is based on fermentation, which are living yes. things. And so depending on what you do with those temperatures, you can alter that. And that is a whole range of science that there are people way smarter than me who understand all of the ins and outs of how that all works. But the vodka, that's not really it. It's pretty much, you're just drinking alcohol with a little bit of water in it. Yeah. So it's more keeping that alcohol from 
uh, evaporating away. Now, what I don't know is how fast does that happen? And are you yeah. actually making that big of a difference by keeping it in the freezer? And I don't know the answer to that question, but I know that scientifically, yes, you can slow that evaporation process, which would be faster with alcohol than it would be with typical water. So the more alcohol you have, the faster that process would happen. Interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think, cool. I think yeah, I think we got all of your questions, I think. Yay, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Quiz time. Oh boy. Knew it was coming though. Yeah, it, it's not a surprise. <laughs> First question. You said everything freezes, right? Yes. Hey, you got it right. Congratulations. <gasps> no, that was just the intro to the question. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> if that statement is true that everything freezes, mm -hmm. then why doesn't vodka freeze when you put it in the freezer because just because everything freezes doesn't mean that everything freezes at the same temperature in fact everything does not freeze at the same temperature and my freezer is not the coldest thing on earth what it's Apparently not my freezer is freezer. actually my freezer is actually not the thing that will reach absolute zero so i am sorry that's true so how does the temperature of your freezer compare to the freezing temperature of vodka my freezer is warmer than the freezing temperature of vodka excellent if that's true and you can put alcohol in the freezer why would you not put beer in the freezer because not all alcohol freezes at the same point either it depends on the alcohol content and the alcohol content of hard liquor is much higher than beer and wine yes and so beer actually would freeze in my freezer because because its freezing point is higher than my freezer okay do you remember what makes its freezing point higher because it has more water and less alcohol I think. bingo there you go <laughs> speaking of water what is unique about water when it freezes compared to most other liquids when they freeze Water expands when it freezes, which is weird because all those skincare podcasts I listen to <laughs> talk about like making your face cold for things to contract and tighten up and all that stuff, but not with water. Not with water. Yeah, you, you tell those other podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last question Does putting vodka in the freezer? make it last longer why or why not technically yes the vo well the the vodka itself won't actually last longer it's just there will be more of it for longer so yeah i guess like eventually at the end of time <laughs> there would be more vodka left in the bottle that's in my freezer than on my shelf because less of it would be evaporating into the air inside of the bottle. Yes. Do we you care how much actually that happens with? We're not sure yet. Unsure. I, I do not know the answer to that question. Am I'm I removing the steaks in my freezer to put the whiskey in my freezer? Probably not. Probably not. It's probably more important. And actually whiskey, side note, they recommend you do not put in the freezer, even though it has a similar alcohol content to okay. vodka. It also has other compounds in it. They call them volatiles, basically things that easily turn into gases and things, but that's what you smell. And that's what gives a lot of the aroma and the, the, the different notes, I think is what they call that in alcohol, right? For different things. And so by freezing it, you actually alter those molecules so that it actually does alter the flavor profile of your whiskey. That may, I mean, I have never once heard someone suggest putting whiskey in the freezer. Yeah. So that I could see that. Yeah, that makes sense. You also, could try whiskey it. is better than vodka. So good job, whiskey, for having more notes and interesting things about you. <laughs> Congratulations, whiskey. <laughs> Apparently, the so the solution that we've come to for this issue is that whiskey is the winner. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that is a solution <laughs> to my hypothesis. <laughs> Congratulations, Whiskey. You won. <laughs> hey, 
And with that, we are just about out of time. <laughs> so pack up your stuff and get ready for my closing remarks. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at I Slept Through Science or on Twitter at Slept Science. If you have dumb science questions like I do, please send them to us. You can email us at I Slept Through Science at gmail.com or you can even send us a voice memo and we'll play it on the podcast. Please rate and review our podcast to tell other people what you think about it. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode and share about our podcast on social media. Thank you to Beth Reed Miller for the artwork. You can check out more of Beth's artwork at Beth is something. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Ah! The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you.